I'm here with Hunter Saffel. Hunter, tell us a little bit about yourself, your credentials, where you graduated from, and what you Um, Hunter Saffel, obviously, I graduated from A-State uh, with my BS in exercise science and also my master's in exercise science. I work at St. Bernard Sports Training. Uh, I run the sports training program here. Um, been here for almost three years now. I've actually just been the head of the program for about a year. Um, worked part-time under Tom Castle before that. I uh, really enjoy it. had a lot of fun with it. So. What brought you to wanting to do this profession? Uh, actually, I wanted to be, be a physical therapist mm -hmm. growing up. Um, I was an athlete, suffered a lot of injuries, um, was in physical therapy, obviously not for good reasons. but um, And through that, I kind of developed a love with working for athletes, or so I thought. And so I wanted to pursue PT, um, and actually I started the exercise science program at A-State in order to go into PT school, and through studying exercise science, I kind of fell in love with training instead of therapy, and um, really kind of felt comfortable in that field, and so um, I really just started kind of pushing towards the strength conditioning, working with athletes, training type deal, instead of... Um, instead of the PT route. I understand. I mean, you, have to work, you have to work with a bigger demographic of people than just yeah. athletes. Yeah. So how long have you been working in athletic training, not just at your position, but overall? Uh, really only about three years. Uh, I did my internship here as an undergrad three summers ago and um, was very fortunate to land, to land a position at working here right afterwards. Um, and so that was in 2014, August, you're good. So, what do you dislike the most about um, being in your position? Man, it's it's more like when an athlete or an, a client or anybody sets the specific goal and they don't necessarily reach it in a time frame that they were hoping for, it kind of discourages the client or the athlete, kind of makes them a little disappointed. Sometimes they, or even me, um, blame that or try to figure that out and so um, anyway I guess just the most the dis most dislike I have for my position is when somebody has this goal this mindset and they have somewhere they want to be and we don't get them there in a certain time frame so they don't really necessarily perform so um, but I guess the hardest part is making sure we individualize everything to get people to their goals in a certain time frame and kind of actually that what, what's your biggest love about what you seeing the success of athletes. Um, we have tons of athletes that we get the privilege to work with and when we see that what we do is translating to the field or the court or whatever it is and that they start to have success in whatever they're doing, it's a, it's a huge praise and um, it's definitely uh, very encouraging on our part as coaches to see that what we're doing is having an impact on their lives. Do you feel like your job fits your lifestyle, or do you feel like, you know, you're kind of a nine-to-five guy, show up and, you know, do your part, or do you feel like you actually live the lifestyle that you teach every day? Uh, I definitely feel like I live the lifestyle. Um, to me, I always say that, you know, trainers or coaches in my field are, we're walking billboards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we can't just talk the talk, we have to walk the walk. So if I'm training an athlete to do a certain movement or to have this certain habit, you know, I've got to be able to, for one, perform that movement, but I also need to be having that or practicing that daily habit or whatever it might be or that technique movement and my own personal movements or function or whatever it might be. So um, I think I live that lifestyle, but I also feel like having this career choice holds me accountable to that lifestyle. So um, not only do I fit into it, but it also kind of fits into me because it makes me live that lifestyle more than I would do myself. Because you like being the bath. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, five years from now, where do you see yourself in this career field? Do you still see yourself at St. Bernard's, you know, at a sport training, do you see yourself somewhat bigger? Um, I don't know if I would necessarily say bigger, but I see my program growing much bigger. Um, I see my marketing and my outreach to grow much more. Um, as I 
as I start to build relationships with coaches and players and um, significant figures around town. Um, I definitely see just my brand growing personally, whether it be here at St. Bernard's or with another company, whatever. Um, uh, but in five years, I know that I will, I will have reached this knowledge base much more than what I have now um, and enough to where um, I will hopefully have this huge clientele or at least a lot of people that know me as a strength conditioning coach and know that I can produce a, um, a very well-trained functional athlete who will perform well on the court or on the field. Um, so hopefully in five years I can, the dream would be like a well-known strength conditioning coach for younger athletes in junior high and high school. Just, just you know, no high school, just junior high, high school, that's yeah. it. That yeah, I think, I, I think my niche is in that. Um, Possibly a few college athletes, maybe. Um, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm fit for the college team atmosphere. Uh, but maybe here and there, working with some um, individual clients, I definitely could see myself doing that. I got. I can understand that because it's hard to work with. You know, mm -hmm. you know, they're adults too. Um, you work with. You know, uh, I intend with you. You work, you work with older women. You work with children of all ages how do you find a way to motivate them every single day the way you do man it's more about like getting to know your clients um i know we talk about when you're in textbooks you hear about individualizing programming but you really don't understand how to individualize something until you actually get to know the diverse group of people that you actually have a chance to train and so i have groups of older women maybe some moms who come in and honestly, they're here, maybe it might be just so they can justify what they're gonna eat. I mean, like they know they're gonna go home and pig out or whatever, so they're here to kind of justify that. So their goals are completely different and set aside from someone who is an 18 year old girl who wants to play college volleyball. So it's really about learning um, who your clients are, what their, you know, what their goals are, and um, just catering to those goals. Um, and having an arsenal and a knowledge base of exercises and different techniques to cater to whoever it might be that you're working with. Finally, do you feel like, you know, ultimately finding their personal motivation is the, is the main key to increasing your, your productivity, you know, making them a better athlete? Yeah, definitely. Finding what drives them? Right, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, finding what drives them and really holding them accountable. Um, would definitely just kind of it translate it all translates into their workouts and making sure they come in with a positive attitude and they're motivated every single day and that stuff will translate over into how their workouts are uh, performed each day and then of course that all translates into and correlates with their performance on the field well hunter i mean I learned a lot from you today and i hope to apply cool. this later on awesome man yeah, it's great i'm talking with you and interviewing this stuff